with hymn 430. We'll sing verses 1 through 6 before the sermon, and then after the sermon and the uh, response there, we will sing verse 7. to Ezekiel in the bizarre vision we read today. Ezekiel answered, Lord God, only you know. As we read on, we find the valley of dry bones was a symbol of God's people Israel. In verse 11, we hear God's people saying, our hope is gone. These were people living in exile in Babylon. 
They thought their hope was gone because they have just heard that Jerusalem and the temple have been destroyed. Some of these people, including Ezekiel, had been carried into exile several years before, but they had held out a hope for a speedy return to their homes as long as Jerusalem and the temple were still standing. During those years, Ezekiel spoke to them God's word, but not words to support that hope. Through Ezekiel, God made it clear that they would be in exile for some time, as God used it to open their eyes and their hearts to their unfaithfulness. Now, Jerusalem was defeated, and the temple itself was destroyed. They say, our bones are dried up and our hope is gone. We are cut off. They were isolated. They were frustrated and they saw no way out. God had used the nations to punish his people, to make clear to them their sin. And this was the center of their sin. They trusted themselves and they trusted other people and other gods instead of trusting and following the true God. It appears that at least part of the message had gotten through because they realize now they can't get themselves out of their problem. And it's at that point that God's word to them shifts from law and condemnation to a word of gospel, promise, hope. God did not lead them into exile to leave them there. He allowed them to suffer defeat so that they would see their need for him once more. In the vision, God asked Ezekiel, can these bones live? God's answer was yes. His spirit through the power of his word spoken by Ezekiel in that vision brought the bones in the vision back together with a rattling sound as they came back into place and covered them with flesh. Then he caused the breath of life to enter them and enlivened the corpses in the vision. The Lord God wanted his people to hear these words and to remember the action of God way back in Genesis, forming man from the dust, breathing into him the breath of life. They were to remember that he is the God of all creation. He's the one who made life. He's the one who's able to restore life. He took them away from the promised land and he's able to take them back to the promised land. He crushed their false hope, but he's able to restore a true and living hope. Then in today's gospel reading, we hear of Lazarus being dead four days. Why is that important? It seems that many Jewish people of that time believed the soul stayed near the body for three days after death in hope that somehow the body would come back to life. But Lazarus was dead already four days. In fact, Jesus stayed away two extra days so that it would be four days by the time he got there. In the people's mind, all hope was gone. Even his sister Martha, who believed Lazarus would rise to life on the last day, Judgment Day, did not think his life could be restored now. She and Mary both thought Jesus could have stopped his illness and restored his health, but after four days dead, four days dead, it was too late. And then Jesus prayed to the Father and spoke the words, Lazarus, come out! And Lazarus came out. In the beginning of his gospel, John calls Jesus the Word. John says Jesus, the Word, is God and was with God in the beginning and was the agent or the one who was responsible for all creation. He made life and he's able to restore life. It was this miracle of life restored to Lazarus that finally led the Jewish leaders to get serious about plotting Jesus' death. They were not concerned anymore about whether or not he was sent from God. 
they were worried, they say, about losing their nation and their place, meaning the temple. This is in the remainder of the chapter in John, if you read on after where we stop today. Their concerns sound a lot like the people of Ezekiel's day and their misplaced hope. As long as Jerusalem was standing and the temple was standing, the people in exile in Babylon thought they were going back soon. As long as Jerusalem was standing and the temple was standing in Jesus' day, the rebuilt Jerusalem and temple of that day, they thought they were fine. Losing their nation and their place, their temple, meant losing their power. And so they begin to plot that one man, Jesus, will die for the people so that the whole nation would not perish. That's the words of the high priest. It's ironic that in spite of their plot, their nation and their precious temple were destroyed. It took place 40 years later, but they were destroyed. And it's the highest irony that the words of this unbelieving high priest came true and then some because Jesus did die for the people. But he died not just for the Jewish nation, but for the people of the whole world. Back to Ezekiel. Can these bones live? Is God's question. With the situation of our country and our businesses today, we may wonder, can we recover? Can we live again? Very often God could ask this question of my life and your life and the life of the church. Too often my spiritual life and the state of affairs of the whole church may look like a valley of dry bones, like there's no hope. But the Spirit of God uses God's Word to breathe life into us again. He gives us not just physical life on the last day, what Martha was looking forward to, but new life now in our spirit so that we can live as God's children here and now. The need of the world today is great. So many people living in fear of illness and economic collapse and even death. And you and I may share some of those fears as time goes along. But even greater, is the need of the world in terms of the spiritual illness that infects us all. So many people are still living in the sin of death, separated from God. Can these bones live? Well, God's answer is the same. Yes, through the power of his spirit and his word. And he uses us, like modern day Ezekiel's, to bring that powerful word to the people who need it. It's a word of life and hope that comes from nowhere else. It's a word about the word, Jesus, who gave his life to take away our sin and death and who rose from the dead so that we too will rise with renewed and perfected bodies and souls to live with him forever. May God's Holy Spirit fill us with refreshed faith in these hard days, that this word, this true hope in Jesus is for us. May God's Holy Spirit then make us bold to share this word of true hope, to share this living Lord and Savior with the world of dry bones that's all around us. To God be the glory. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding Keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. We sing verse 7 of hymn 430.